what they go do with me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear on the floor. What's up, y'all? Sugar Rihanna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And who do we have in the building today? You know the vibes is your girl Stunna Dior, aka the biggest. Yes, we got my girl Stunna <laughs> Dior in the building. And we got a lot of stuff to get into, but before we do, we're gonna play a quick round of rapid fire questions. All right? Okay. First thing that comes to mind. Got it? All right. Favorite word. Stunna. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing about living in New York. Stunna. <laughs> uh-uh, don't do that. You said the first thing. We're not about to do that. Bro, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, I'm going to give you okay. like two seconds to okay. think about it. All right, the best part is the vibes, food. Okay. It's always lit. It's always something. Unpopular music opinion. Unpopular music opinion. I like mainstream music. Okay. I feel like that's a popular opinion. I guess it depends on who you ask. Nobody I know is like, like they don't want to hear no mainstream music. No, but I listen to, well, mainstream art. They like to hear, like, um, the sideline cuts and stuff. But I like to listen to also what's the big records because that's mm -hmm. what we try and do. You feel me? I like, I like a good balance. I feel yeah. like. I, yeah, it's balance. For me, I hate, I say this a lot, like, especially in the R&B space more than rap. Like, I hate the underground to mainstream pipeline because I feel like the music just doesn't hit the same. Mm -hmm. So I can understand when people listen but that's to, like, what, the underground yeah. music more than they do the mainstream. But, but that's why I like to listen when it's already lit. I don't want to listen when you try to figure it out just when you got well, the number one. Sometimes it be better. Like, I feel like even, like, the weekend. It's good to listen. Like, I feel like, but that's it depends on what you're listening for. I like to hear the growth of an artist. And mm -hmm. then, like, obviously, like, just the more you get in the industry, you kind of understand, like, what music is really like a whole layout it's a recipe to the shit mm. so it's like once you kind of understand there's a recipe i'm listening for niggas recipe mm. you know what i'm saying I'm like, okay that makes sense yeah. from an artist's perspective that definitely does make sense all right um favorite fast food restaurant uh shit chick-fil-a period zodiac yeah. sign yeah um i'm aquarius the okay. best is all right, not too, not too much. <laughs> the vibes, you <laughs> not too much. Big Aries, shout out to all my Aries out there. Um, most annoying trait in a partner, complaining. I'm gonna keep saying that. Like, don't be complaining to me, please. <laughs> I've already got enough stress. I don't need to hear you complaining. <laughs> <laughs> if you gotta say any, if you got to say anything to anyone, who would it be, and what would you say? So, like, if you had the chance to say anything to anybody, who would you say it to and what would you say? Oh, I need to figure out how to get a billion dollars. So, I got to talk to I gotta talk to Bezos. Oprah, Jay. I got to talk to them. You feel mm. me? I got to see what's good mm -hmm. and the black, to get the black dollar mm. and the white see, dollar. See, that part. That's okay. Um, biggest turn off. I know I said most annoying trait, but what's the biggest turn off? So they didn't even start complaining yet. What did they a do? Dirty nigga. Ew. Ooh. Why are you wearing those pants again? Not why. <laughs> <laughs> Wash them, babe. <laughs> why are you wearing those pants again when you go crazy? <laughs> so, okay. So what's the timeline? So you see a nigga with a pair of pants on on Monday. Friday, you see him with the you same pants You can wear them again. On. Just wash them. Okay. If That's you're fine. not watching them and you're wearing them again and you outside and you're on the block and you're going in places and you're taking them off and you're sitting on the bed and you're putting them back on, you it's nasty. Nah, sitting on your bed because you put a shower and then put back on dirty clothes, you dirty. Okay, I definitely agree with that. Um, something that people love that you hate. What? Something that people love that you hate. I don't even know what people love. I don't people. <laughs> Like, like for me, I hate tomatoes. Oh, stuff that people love. I don't yeah. like mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Okay. Like not no. on sandwiches and nothing. I don't really like white sauces at all. Just give me hot sauce, please. Oh man. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, do you need sandwiches? Not with mayo. Like it's gotta have mustard. Okay, so you got some kind of sauce. I'm like, mm. All right. <laughs> Favorite season. 
Um, oh, I like the summer, to be honest. Well, I like that spring-summer transition, like, right now. Mm-hmm. Like, before, it, you see me? I couldn't wait. I'm just, like, all over the place, <laughs> bitch. Like, ew, is it hot? Is it cold? It's a little cool in the night. I'm putting on my, my, my boots, because you can't be wearing boots when it's 90. Now you're bugging. Mm-hmm. But you, I don't want my this toes to be cold, and I got on the shorts. Like, it's got to be that 75, where you could do whatever you want. Yeah. We was, literally, time. we was literally talking about that earlier. I was like, I feel like this is the time where you could be in a spa with somebody that got a hoodie on, somebody, somebody got a t-shirt, got somebody got shorts, dress, somebody, somebody got, got like it could really suit. be anything. And it's like you everybody gets a pass yeah. because we don't know. This what is we perfect. Getting. And it's not too cold to where you don't want to stand outside and smoke a split. Like you mm-hmm. could do if you want to vibe, you want to you want to enjoy outside. And I feel like New York is only like this for about two days, and that's all you yep, get. Now it's about to be blazing hip hop and RB outside. <laughs> um favorite underground artist. Uh favorite underground artist. Yet, me. Another favorite underground artist. Shit, <laughs> uh, who do I like? Um, let me think. Who do I be listening to? Damn, I be listening to so many mainstream people, and my friends is the only underground people that I really listen to. Okay, shout out one of your friends. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, shout out to y'all. Oh. Nah, <laughs> the general shout out to y'all goes. Crazy stunner, you not about to do this. <laughs> you not about to do this. If you don't shout one person out I, at this nah, point, no, nah, I'm I right, shout out to all the people I got features with. Everybody I got a feature with, shout out to you. Shout out to Trev Moolah, shout out to Luciano Baby Viral, shout out to everybody that I got a record with too. Shout out to Rowdy, shout out to uh to 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 Afrobeats Kitty. Everybody I got a record to Steph G You know what I'm saying She's moving That Lola Everybody has Shout out to all of them yeah. But you know That was such a Like You know a what it is Cause answer. I told you earlier I just be listening to Mainstream, mainstream. artists I mm-hmm. really don't listen to Okay Underground artists Like whatsoever Like you already gotta be established If I'm gonna put you on my playlist Cause you gotta have your That's vibe That's interesting Oh so we, we like definitely gonna the, get into I that I listen to underground music all day Cause this is all I, I'm in the underground So yeah. everywhere that I go It's just unheard of music Yeah You know what I'm saying So it's like You know Okay Like I do shows are, all the yeah, time I So I hear like 60 artists That's all new So yeah. that's why I said The only ones I listen to Are my friends mm-hmm. Moolah, Moolah, Dev Jam People that I'm really working with And I got records with Cause I really support they move and I you know what I'm saying I yeah. like it the people that I'm seeing the Steph G's and all these people that we out and I support their music I listen to it I do music with them mm-hmm. those are people that's moving that makes so much sense and we're gonna get into it cause we were supposed to be doing a quick back and forth <laughs> but I'm definitely gonna circle back cause you trying to play have... me cause I, I always got some deep logic behind it. I'm like one of them fake deep deep people I might say something light or like do something spontaneous and people don't understand but, but I it's always loaded. got yeah, it's a, a, re- reason. a yeah. reason behind it that's the second time that I asked you about something <laughs> it, the math was math then alright um, favorite clothing brand Co- COVID clothing <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite like COVID brand? Mask, um, <laughs> uh, um, Pfizer, Missouri. <laughs> yeah. Um, shout out to Shop Akira. I have the sponsorship with them. I love Shop Akira. Um, I like uh, a lot of dope up and coming designers like Domo Zillionaire and uh, Riches by G. These are people that, you know, style celebrities design for them that's up and coming and make stuff. And then obviously, you know, Dior for Dior. If you do a door, Dior. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And one word to describe 2023. Ooh, roller coaster. Mm. But it's up. I know that's right. Yeah, up, never down. Roller coasters do go up, though. We roller coasters definitely do go up. Yes, and you know sometimes I don't really in the process, like roller coasters. It's a little rocky. They make me sick. Yeah, I don't like. <laughs> I'm more of a rides girl than a roller coaster girl for sure. What um, a rides girl, not a roller coaster. What's the difference? Oh my gosh! Wow, it's so funny because I was just having this. A ride <laughs> is something that like you get in, you're strapped in, and it like moves. It's not on a track. It just moves. You want a little mini choo choo so, train? Like, no, a, I mean a choo choo train is a ride, <laughs> but like you know, like the pirate ships or like even the ones that be going around like this. I rather those than a roller those coaster. things that swing and go like that. Those yeah. make you want to throw up too. Yeah, no, I, I'll go on those. It's Ooh. just something about like the motion she on the track. She said I'm a rides girl. I need to cruise. I don't need to be. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like being on the track. Yeah. I don't know. 
Yeah, but Final um, destination shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't need no like, and then also like I'm low key scared of heights sometimes. So like, all I would need is that's for what the, it is. The it's the heights for me. I don't there, like that and get stuck, there. right? No. Yeah, no, or upside down. Oh, imagine yeah, getting stuck no, upside down. I don't down. even want to imagine. We <laughs> we not gonna do that. Cause yeah, no. All right. So I mean, I'm very excited to speak to you because I've been following you on Instagram for a minute. I see you doing a whole lot of stuff. You wear so many hats. You're an artist. You're a CEO. You're a model. You have like so many credits under your belt. So I'm so excited to get into a lot of these things. Um, but first, let's talk about Mother's Day because yeah. you and your mom posted a nice collab post on your Insta. It was yeah. so pretty. Your mom is so beautiful. Shout out to Mama Stunner, Mom Duke. Shout out to Mama Stunner. <laughs> um, how was your Mother's Day? Um, my Mother's Day was calm. I, like my mom, she lives between Africa and Arizona, so I only really get to see her like once or twice a year. She's working really hard mm -hmm. for everything that she's doing over there, and get I'm working honest. really hard over here. Yeah. So you know, it's it gets really hard for us to see each other on the holidays and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But we just making little sacrifices. Yeah, so, and yeah. the love is there. The pictures definitely yeah. gave everything yeah. they need to give. So you said that your mom's traveling back and forth between Ghana. And Arizona, were you raised with like Ghanaian, a lot of like Ghanaian tradition and culture? Um, not with a lot of Ghanaian tradition because I was born in Detroit. So it's yeah. like I'm from Detroit originally. So I grew up with more of that culture mm -hmm. than anything. And oh, just, girl, you know, I know. The music, I, yeah. But like the influence of like the African culture kind of came l later in our life as we got more tapped in. Okay. And through our travels and our ancestry. And um, I had a like I did a lot of philanthropy like when I was coming in. Mm -hmm. and that was just like different work with schools in Africa and mm -hmm. villages and building fresh water wells and going over oh, there awesome. so I was doing a lot of things and that is a part of what kind of helped me tap in with the culture even more mm. and you know tap in with where I'm from and that led to my mom becoming um, a queen chief in Ghana so she's wow. actually a queen chief in Zosa Mana. so that's why those pictures were like in our actual like heritage clothes and stuff yeah and yeah. the royalty the nice girl. like that's so that's so interesting yeah so okay wow so how was your how was your music received by your mom like how or your family in general how was your music received I, my parents love it I feel okay. like I have, all of my creativity is started in the house so it's like even with my mom she's like she's an entrepreneur so she does she she loves fashion she loves like even though it's different things that we do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying she just loves all of that so I send my music off she be telling me like yo you should sample this and put this in there like she's Dang. really like she loves it all she likes the diversity you know and people always ask like and my dad too when I send it, my music home to Detroit because he's in Detroit mm -hmm. like you know, if I'm doing a different beat, I definitely send it over. Like, let me know how you feel about this. And, oh, nice. you know, get their feedback. My family's super involved in, like, you know, like the sound of my music mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They 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 like the vibes. It's okay, good because I could trust them. So I know if it's whack, they're going to tell me it's whack. Right. And they never said that, though. <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> and support definitely goes a long way, especially when it's coming from your parents or people who you who raised you. Like, yeah. And like you said, you know that if something's not right, they're going to let you know. Yeah. And you know there's no ulterior motives or anything like that they're gonna give you the real and it's so like i'm here by myself like i've been living in new york over 10 years you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i'm in new york i've been here by myself this whole time so it's like i they don't always get to see every single thing so i kind of have them a part of the process when i can't facetime them in the studio mm -hmm. you know like send a rough draft over or something like that so they don't gotta wait till i shoot a video and i'm right. shooting and later down the line because right. they're not here so it helps me just feel connected overall because it's not like they really come out to my shows mm -hmm. or whatever dope experiences but technology know? makes it happen That's facetime i love it right <laughs> so um so let's start from like the beginning. So first, when you think about your childhood, I know you grew up in Detroit. Um, think about your childhood. What song is the first song that comes to mind that you will be listening to like as a kid? Oh, so it's like, it's really three okay. things that popped in my head. Okay. Right? So during my childhood, like growing up in Detroit, y'all know Detroit got the, the infamous Detroit beats that are really popular. Mm -hmm. So back in Detroit, when I was a kid, there was a group called like the Cheddar Boys and like Blade Icewood. I know that um, even Cash Dow, she just sampled one of the famous I'm a Cheddar Boy Baby, one of their songs. Mm -hmm. Like I remember all of the lyrics to all of the music like that growing up. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the first time that I really like considered 
conceptually could like you know start understanding the rap lyrics or whatever and it was around the time that um jay-z had dropped i think like the blueprint or the black album oh, okay. it was one of them and you know i just like fell in love with that so it's like those is the vibes okay that's the childhood yeah when jay-z dropped the blueprint damn all right Sheesh. Or the black album. I think it was the black album. Okay, because I was, I was really like, wait, hold on. Because we used to listen to that in the house. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like I can remember being really young. My parents listened to everything, Mob Deep, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I can remember Foxy Brown. I can remember all of it being played like right. as a little kid. So you grew up with a lot of culture, especially like hip hop culture. Hip hop culture. Music it's you. the Motor City. Like it. That's why I'm saying people don't understand that just Detroit, everything is about music. You feel me? Motown Records, mm-hmm. Kid Rock. Like, there's so much. I went to the Winans Academy, which is like the Marvin um, Winans family school. They have a charter school, a private school where mm-hmm. they, it's for the arts. So it's like they teach you how to read music and play like instruments and stuff. Even like they had Oprah came to our school, you know, Tyler mm-hmm. Perry came to our school. Like, I was able to be a, a part of that mm-hmm. going to Fox Theater. So it was like very musically inclined from when I was a kid, just as like being involved in it. You know what I'm saying? So I always loved it. I didn't think I was going to be a rapper neither. That's a crazy thing. see, that was going to be my follow up. Yeah. So you were going to the school. So clearly you were musically inclined and it was something that you were interested in. Mm-hmm. But what was the vision that you saw for yourself at that time? Oh, when I first when I first started, so I was rapping from when I was little, but I just didn't think that I was gonna like grow up to be a rapper. It was just a part of like rapping okay. with my cousins and okay. my uncles. Okay, so it was like you thought it was just like something you did for fun. I was Stunna Dior, yeah, the rapper. So you was always Stunna Dior. From 15, 16. I was rapping from little kid. 15, 16. I was always Stunna Dior, the rapper. What? They got some receipts where you go see me like new music coming soon. It's like 13 years ago. So Stunna, <laughs> of course, I have to ask you. So who gave you the name, first of all? Who gave you the name Stunna Dior? Um, I gave the, the name Dior. I picked that for myself, but Stunna just came because like, you know, my style. Like I was just always okay, extra. Yeah. Okay. Extra. And what is a stunner to you? What does a stunner mean? Like, you no. Know, well, a stunning. A stunner is because stunning. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You could just have like. I feel like it's a vibe. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. the stunner is a vibe. It's a presence. It's like extraness of extraness, happiness, extra swag, extra vibes. I'm extra tall. Like you feel me? I'm extra lit. Like I'm extra cute. Like it's just extra. It's just extra. Yeah. Okay. And you really like you come across very, very confident. I feel like you're not only just confident in general, but you're confident in yourself. You're confident in your craft. How have you maintained that confidence in yourself? Like what pushes you to keep that energy? The fans and the supporters. The mm. fans and the supporters are the people that really, really, really push me like to go to keep going. Because sometimes it's been like me. I've been in the industry for a while, so it's mm-hmm. been a long. That's why it's like this is second nature to me. I've been. This is the only thing I know, so I'm really comfortable mm-hmm. because I've been doing this my whole life. And, right. But um, it gets hard because you sometimes don't always feel like. Oh, is things happening mm-hmm. quick enough? Especially when you get used to doing stuff. Like it's like. Is this a the moment? Is this not? You don't know. Mm-hmm. But the people that like pay attention to your stuff and message you and show you love, like, oh, you're doing so good this year or this. Or mm-hmm. I know the people that notice, those are the people that's like, okay. Because I get a lot of messages about like people that been following me from when I first moved to New York. Mm. So I'm like, wow, thinking about all of the stuff that I've posted since right, then and right. watching. And it's like, wow. So it's not just me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like other people have interests. Well, I'm just start posting regular stuff on Instagram and let go of everything else. Right. It definitely <laughs> makes it worth it for sure. When you know that people actually enjoy yeah, what when it they're is enjoying that you're doing. It, the feedback, you know, mm-hmm. all of that, that's what really helps. So from my knowledge, I know that, so you were living in Detroit, then you moved to Arizona, right? Yeah. And then from Arizona, you moved to New York. Yeah. So, what was your favorite place to live in from the three? Period. I know that's right. Right here. New York City. Um, now Harlem. It, Harlem. Was my favorite place to live, yeah. Harlem was your favorite place, really? Yes. So I'm not going to out your business if you don't want to out it, but you're not currently living in Harlem. So no. what separates Harlem from where you live in now? We ain't going to make this Harlem versus Brooklyn. Like, it's like... I mean, I'm a Brooklyn girl, so... I'm 
I mean, I guess by nature, I'm just a little <laughs> curious. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're definitely making it Harlem <laughs> versus Brooklyn. What That's was it about does. Harlem? Um, I feel like that, well, you know, Harlem, everybody, like, the energy of, like, the fashion. And mm-hmm. I feel like people are always outside and they have a different, more outgoing energy. Mm-hmm. In Harlem, it's like people, it's so close to the city. So you get that different vibe of, mm-hmm. like, just being able to go right there. Mm-hmm. And then you still get, like, Dapper Dan chilling on the corner. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You still get, like, people out rapping you mm-hmm. still get the protesting you still get pieces of everything all right there very close so you know so yeah it's like, i won't i won't like that argue with you on that harlem is very concentrated in culture mm-hmm. um especially because like there are places in brooklyn that you can get that but because yeah. you know we're talking about a, a bigger it's place like, of yeah, course it's, it's you can get a few blocks out. and stuff like right. that in brooklyn but in harlem it's like you just get that energy overall right i def- i can see where you come from so if you had to take or if have you taken no no what's one thing that you've taken from each of the places that you've lived in that you feel like you either still practice or still think about um from each of the places that you lived I take it all in. I feel like um, New York's a big melting pot. So, you know, um, and and New York's a melting pot. And I always remember that uh, the opportunities and what's here, because when you get here, you could get sensory overload that you just don't even be doing stuff because it's so much. You're so used to having so much options. Mm -hmm. But when I go on tour, when I pop to other places, if I go visit somebody in Arizona, you don't got any of that. No food options, no party options, no easy access to get places you don't have that so it's just like I always think about what those places have and appreciate where I'm at based off of that you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying take that with me like everybody has a different demographic of people how it was growing up in Detroit where like Detroit is really the hood so it's like I some spots in Brooklyn I'm not scared to walk through the peas in Brooklyn Mm -hmm. I'm scared to walk down east side in Detroit Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. (laughs) like Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so it's like it's just understanding where you are but also understanding like what's going on in that area and why it's like that and then you know being a vibe you ain't gotta really be scared I, I'll be outside like I'm one of those I know people you be outside, that's like I just it. I'm a people person I'm not too scared to like come in a different area and really embrace everybody that's around because mm-hmm. you get that motivation from everything you know mm-hmm. so something that you just said you said that you outside I know you outside I've been seeing you um, in your posts and stuff how important do you think it is for an artist artist to be outside in real life and not just like on social media and stuff like that do you think that that contributes to an artist's success yeah i think it depends on the artist though not everybody got to be outside you know what i'm saying um i think that it's necessary to make sure that you could touch that fan base that you're not touching on the internet and the the actual in-person connection you Mm -hmm. know and that's what really started making me come out because for a while i was just an internet person i was a model just modeling and only posting a lot on the internet Mm -hmm. so when i would go out people would recognize my pictures and they would recognize my work or this is stunna from this and that but um people didn't know my my vibes like they didn't know me as a person so Mm -hmm. It wasn't I feel like when I started going out you get you get to connect with people you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying so they really get to like invest more you know what I'm saying you get to really vibe with people and really build that cult fan base that like is going to love the different things you do so mm-hmm. I feel like it's important in that aspect to go out but if you like an anti-social person just stay in the house and post your videos because you're gonna go out and you're gonna be acting weird yeah and um you're probably gonna lose friends because <laughs> oh, no, I feel Cause like, be like that because it's like some people you thought was like a superhero you're like so cool online and then like you meet them in person and you know and you never know what is going on they could be having they just may not know how to deal with so many people sometimes mm-hmm. they don't know who you are sometimes people acting too hollywood like mm-hmm. it's like yeah we know you on per and online but who are you in real life let's mm-hmm. connect you gotta mm-hmm. connect with people so they could continue to support them and that's what i was gonna say i felt like it's it's tricky um obviously i'm not an artist but i think that i can see why an artist would feel the need to like go out and like make their presence known just because there are so many people that are doing it right now so 
yes, you may. It may hurt that's you. you get your more money than it helps though, you. Honestly, that's the real reason that you see people outside. That's a part of the the that's the bag. When you in the clubs, you're getting paid to be there. You're getting people to shazam your music that never heard it. Like that's outside because not everybody's on the internet. You know what I'm saying? The internet yeah. seems like it's everything. Everything, but a lot of people is not on there just discovering the next artist. Like they're just following their family and their friends. Mm -hmm. So it's like you still have to really tap into different markets and mm -hmm. different audiences and yeah. get that money. It's going to come faster than streams. They pay you that book and boop, boop, boop. You run through there. I mean, and I will say this. Um, you're fortunate to be able to get paid for your club appearances because i like go that. outside people want to get yeah, paid and, and they don't go outside and that's what i was about to say but <laughs> i know and I, I understand that you've built that for yourself but for but people, i did mad free stuff right and so that's what i was about to say for the people that are still coming up there's still uh, a window where you have to take those that's what i'm saying and make those too many people act they want to skip stuff. steps you yeah. know what i'm saying you can't really skip steps like that you gotta be like all right i'm gonna put the work in now i could pack out a party a club consistently you know why also people come to fuck with me because i make sure that people is good mm -hmm. you're gonna get in you're not gonna be <laughs> i'm not gonna not say hi and act weird like if you came out to support me i'm gonna show you love mm -hmm. so they gonna always come back because they know it's a situation right and if you can bring people out you always gonna have a bag waiting for you you know what i'm saying and you know i i think that's and it's free marketing to what you took and and that's it so to what you were saying before you were saying like you know if you're awkward then you could just stay in house but i think that there's also a level of like it's a it's a learning opportunity too i mean if you're just starting out you may be awkward like nah, off the but gate, i just like not that outside. i mean the awkward dudes that's like it's a lot of rappers that i've been around and they just not people persons because they think everybody's out to get them mm. you know what i'm saying so it's like really you're blocking your fans yeah like you're doing you're not even giving it a chance to show and then like you don't want anybody to come near okay you. You i can wanna, under i can understand you that. know what i'm saying you don't want to talk to nobody like oh, oh this all you got you're you're, yeah, you're, you're really hurting stunning yourself, more yourself. Than you're yeah. yeah okay you're stunning yourself <laughs> Um, I can definitely I okay once again this goes back to what you were saying like sometimes you say stuff and it's like wait but let me just pick your brain about this but it's like okay it definitely makes sense so if you had to describe your sound um, how would you describe it big <laughs> Is that, am, I doing, am I doing it again <laughs> no no um, no, I, I, no, I think I'm versatile. You know what I'm saying. I think that my um my my style is like and is distinctive in my like my voice and my yeah my cadence. But all yeah. my music is different. Even the stuff like. I, you know, I've been being slow with the, like dropping, but my vault is crazy, and I've been I'm so excited for when we tap into like the new sound of mm. what we creating and stuff like that, and learning how to use your instrument. You know, what I'm saying it's a learning process. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes artists get too excited and they drop everything because they think it's good. Yeah, and sometimes you might do better the next time that you work on something else. So mm -hmm. now it's like I want to choose the best. You know, I think it's so interesting because you're so pretty and your voice is so like gritty like yeah it's so like i i don't know like i love when a voice doesn't match the expectation in look like look wise that mm -hmm. i would have for a person not to say that okay i, I don't like want to say too much yeah like i feel like when i yeah like you look like you'll be a singer i felt the same way about brent fires too yeah like when i heard him I like pictured him one way, and then when I saw him, I was like, "This yeah. is definitely and he has a not very what like a soft, angelic." Yes, voice. Bibby also. Yeah. Bibby, like, Bibby, when yes, I heard the, him, I was like, "Oh yeah!" And like, he had that voice from young. I had a clear picture of what I thought that he would look like, and then I saw him like, "This yeah. is the same." Like it, it just didn't line up, and I felt like with you, it's like, "Wow, you're so pretty!" Like it, like I would expect your voice to be like so dainty and like, but like, like no, you. <laughs> Like, like you said, then you be talking that talk. Um, but I also feel like to what you said about versatility, it seems like, um, at least from what I've been seeing, that you kind of like keep up with what's like what, what's trending at the same time. Like you post, you just dropped a song that had like a mm, like a yeah the jersey like, yeah type, like it had like yeah. a nice little jersey sound, and I was like, okay, I like that. How important do you think it is to keep up with? the trending like sounds do you think it's important mm, it's a 50 50 i feel like you know you want to be able to make sure that you sell and you can get across to your audience you know mm -hmm. so i just like making fun music and i like to 
make music that I would listen to. So mm. I don't think like when I listen to my music, it's always trendy and the like way that I do it. Even my drill songs, it's not always the same. If I have on another drill beat, then I could rap like that. But like it's about taking what's current and making it you. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like that's what it is for me. Like mm-hmm. so, it's like finding vibes that you sit well in the pocket of, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And just doing you on it, but mm-hmm. still making sure that it's relatable to the right. audience. And that's because you knew you, you, I don't want to, you don't, I feel like it's harder when you come in with like a total different vibe, unless you already a for sure, like shooter, when you coming in with like a total different vibe, mm-hmm. like your marketing plan got to be so much more stronger. Yeah. I think that as long as it's not a copy and paste, I think, it can work for an artist if you if you make music not all of your music especially if that's not what you want to do in the long run but if you make a song to like a jersey beat you make a song maybe to like a little drill beat if that's what you're into um just so that you can show that you got it Mm -hmm. and you can add a little different twist to it like Mm -hmm. like i said not a copy and paste not doing something that you know you you can't do that copy and paste thing kills me because when you this is another reference back to like the mainstream thing that i was saying to you Mm -hmm. when you listen to mainstream music nobody sounds alike like like it doesn't sound like nikki cardi who are meg nobody's voice is distinctively the same hmm. everybody sounds different even if they're making a similar type of jersey music all of the mainstream artists and mainstream, the people that okay. are big all are distinctively different you get what i'm saying so it's like you they're hmm. them you know you can't so and so can't rap like this person that person can't rap like that you can't be on copy and paste and uh expect to like get put on for that because they're they already have that mm-hmm. what's you what makes it different why right. do people want to come to you for so, it if they can go to somebody else for it so where i think that that gets very like tricky is you're very right like i'm thinking about it to try to figure out if there's anybody i could think that because even people that sound similar have differences where it's like you can tell who like mm-hmm. who's who but then I'm like, what if there's somebody that just so happens to sound like Nikki? Does it mean they that she sh- there's people? They're just not. But they're not mainstream. There. Exactly. Right. But I'm saying, like, <laughs> do you think it's because there's only one person that, that has that they'll sound? They'll just give the song to Nikki if it's that great. Mm. <laughs> like, they'll just give and it I to her. And I feel like that kind of sucks <laughs> like, if you really you think know? about it. Like, the fact I mean, that there's people's voices that's like other people, and they do get lit for also having that sound but mm-hmm. i think that at some point you gotta uh branch off to something that's gonna make you distinguishedly different mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and mm-hmm. you don't want to seem like you're constantly copying somebody right so mm-hmm. it's like if you just if you sound have a voice like that person and you're trying to make the same exact music as that person mm-hmm. and like you know what i'm saying like it happens but then people be having a total different look mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. oh he sounds like justin timberlake but he looks like idris alba and like that's dope yeah no i'm like you saying that really has has the wheels turning because the first person that i thought about was like when dusty first came out Mm -hmm. everybody was comparing him to pop Mm -hmm. and something that you just said was if you look different if you have something that sets you apart maybe if you're from a different place i feel like dusty very much they had similar voices Mm -hmm. they were from like close pro- in very close, close proximity, proximity yeah. they made like sim- similar type sim- of music. yeah so i i can't help but wonder if that's kind of like um i feel like it was still different like dusty's music rolling and controlling doesn't sound like uh meet the woo or we at the party you feel it me doesn't, like but what i'm what saying is. is his voice is similar the vibes are similar but the actual lyrical content and the delivery of what they was talking about of some of the stuff was totally different you feel me so it was but and, and to i feel you, like he still also developed more into his artistry from that from that no i completely agree my whole thing is to the average consumer that's a conversation that was happening a lot and i wondered if that was something that was kind of keeping dusty Good, from yeah. reaching that mainstream level i don't know mm-hmm. but i just thought about similar people was, similar sounds, like, it was it, but, that but that was because they were mind. worried if, if he was being authentic mm-hmm. and but when you show that you are being authentic then people rock with that they just want to make sure you're not you know, mm-hmm. being trying to be somebody else mm-hmm. that you're not. Free Dusty. Yeah, free him. Um, so you perform at a lot of like upcoming showcases. 
you recently just went you were at south by southwest a couple of months ago doing your thing out there you just came back from dc you was doing your thing out there um and even in the city you perform at a lot of the showcases that happen over here um what was the most memorable showcase that you performed at this far oh I, um uh it's been so many good ones but um I liked performing at uh, the Daniels Leather Fashion Show that I headlined mm -hmm. with um, that was Zeus Network and week, right? Krishan and Blueface yeah. and everybody was there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was really dope. Just because you know, um, just as coming from being a model for one, so it's just like in incorporating both of my talent, like the, the things that I love mm -hmm. together. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And kind of being in that space, that was one of my favorite. And, um, of course, it was a lot of dope people in the building. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole South by Southwest experience was dope, too, because I was doing, like, five shows a day. Mm. And so I did, like, 15, 15 plus shows for South by Southwest. And that was my first wow. time ever going. So it was really dope to, like, be able to go in these markets. And, like, I ain't know so much walking, girl. Nobody told me to tee. <laughs> Nobody said do not wear those shoes because, like, it's literally, like, you're Wait, going from place to place. Any yeah, shoes is bad shoes. No. I should just wear slippers. Like it's okay. too much. I mean, you said five shows a day. I, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a know. strip, so it's like you're going here, here, yeah, here. I would have had to down. put some Crocs on or something. Mm. That's crazy. So the whole experience was good for you. Do you feel like you were able to make connections? And like, did you do you feel like you yeah. benefited from that experience beyond the performance aspect? No, absolutely. Um, just being able to go in different markets and like. Tap in with people that you already connected with and mm -hmm. see and move together. Like I was able to move in a, as a unit out there because I had support from a lot of people that was from different states and records with other artists that was moving. So, you know, the reception was like super great. Like mm. it was great to go in places and they already knew what was happening. I did my on the radar out there. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I saw you body that, by the way. Thank you. So it was like that. that's just like a home connection and being able to come in different markets and still knock stuff out. I, mm -hmm. I, I was able to do a, a bunch of different little interviews and performances. So I feel like I definitely right. broke a record, like break records. That's what they say is for, right? South by Southwest is to go down there and break a record mm -hmm. because you want to go down there and let the right people hear it to where they like, now they in tune with it And I, I felt like I did that And it was dope to come and see Like other people you know That's moving right. In different places right. And really catch up So when it comes to the showcases That happen in New York um, How did you get into Do you remember what your first one was? Yeah You do? What was uh, your first showcase? My first showcase? In New York, yeah Oh, I don't know what it was. Oh, that's York. what I was like. Yeah, you I know it was my first show. First it was in Atlanta. That's where okay. I broke it. I was on tour. Okay. Um, and then I came back and I performed that up. Oh, actually, I'm lying. I remember my first time that what I did it? perform it? Drewski okay. show. It was a feature that I did. Shout out Drewski. Before I ever dropped my first record, that was my first show in New York. Okay. And it was one of um, it was one of those one like of the, the shows that like that like uh, I forgot what they call it, but yeah, yeah. At the I, time, I know so that was like been. my first one, and then the first time I performed it was crazy because the show damn near got shot up in Atlanta. So mm -hmm. that was like my first like time performing my song it was very packed it was a good experience it mm -hmm. was like the crowd was very receptive and then oh hell broke loose <laughs> damn so it was like i'm like damn right never a dull moment right so do you have any like performance rituals is there anything that you do to get yourself in a in a right mindset before you go on stage nah no you just do it i just do it anytime you want me to perform right now yeah Nah, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that really, like you're you're really a natural. I feel like I would need to get a couple like woosahs, probably pray. Nah, you know what happened? I've had a horrible moments where it's like you might be crying right before you touch the stage. You might be arguing. You might have people that's like trying to, you know, get in the way of positive opportunities or whatever the case is. You just got to be ready. And I feel like that's when I perform the best is like when I'm under that pressure. Mm -hmm. That's a true performer. That's a really true performer. So out, even outside of you making your music, I know, like I said, you wear so many hats. Something that I found interesting, though, was that you were Meg's body double <laughs> and her B-I-T-C-H video. Mm -hmm. That's fire. Yeah. How did you get into like, how did that happen? 
Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I started off modeling. So mm -hmm. when it was time I was over COVID, I was doing music videos because the industry was pretty much shut down, mm -hmm. but like nobody was touring or nothing. But, um, everybody that was home was doing videos and mm -hmm. that was like the time that I also started doing music. So it was crazy because me and Meg are the same sign. We both Aquarius and our birthdays are like two or three days from each other and we the same age. Wow. And we both only childs. These are our facts, right? We, so we it gives a, double yeah. visually and Yeah, so when I was natural. able to and I was I had my brand at the time. So when I came to the set, I initially cast it. I submit somebody messaged me and told me about that to submit to be the body double and I did. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get the job as the body double at first. Mm -hmm. Somebody else got the job as her stunt double. And then when I got there and they had the like main girls that was doing it, I was one of those girls. I was gonna be one of the girls that was like her backup dancers. But but when their stunt devil came in, she you didn't, didn't look give. anything. Yeah. She was way shorter than us and everything. So they was like, No. Like, who did this? We got it. Like, she's sitting right here. Let's right. do it. And um, you know, Meg's Dang, personality was super dope. Oh, like, it was super dope when we came out there. I brought her some merch, like some glasses and stuff. Cause it, we shot it. We we actually did the video in the month of our birthday. Mm. It was like a, a few days before our birthday. It was an Aquarius. So affair. it was Aquarius affair. You know what I'm saying? She was like, you know, pull up to the party. And she was just a really dope person. She was like, Oh, hey, it's me. Like Wow, her. that's so that's so it was nice. a really dope experience. We ride in a rave, she twerking out the roof, uh -huh. and we just riding through Brooklyn and people like, oh look, so that's so dope. So when you're in um, situations like that, I know you've been in a bunch of music videos. Um, and even when you do your modeling and stuff, do you keep it strictly to what you're there for? Or do Hell you plug yeah. in your other businesses? No. First of all, I try not to bother anybody when they're on their sets because I don't like when people bother me when I'm on my set because mm -hmm. their goal is to get their budget and their shit done like mm -hmm. we're not there to like sell anything but right. it's good to network you know what i'm saying so i just worry about being like the most like professional at that specific job mm -hmm. so they call me back for another one mm -hmm. like i'm not there like oh i could rap too like okay move you know what i'm saying like and I ask you that because I think that there's a lesson to be learned in that. Um, every time that may seem like there's a good time is not. <laughs> and yeah. I think that a lot of people, people think wrong. like, oh, I'm in a room with they Meg. So let me just like crazy. Shoot. It's not always It's a distraction sometimes to what they have to do. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just like being conscious of what really is the good time and stuff. So mm -hmm. definitely I took the, like when it, when I, after we did the video, when I took the time, I brought her a gift and mm -hmm. that was for my brand and everything told her happy birthday. And then, you know, we were able That's to chop it up. That's the plug right there. About, That's you how know, you, yeah. Then you able to kind of chop it up. So it's about, you know, the right time and the right moment. You don't want to be um, overbearing. And then also you don't want to be trying to overly sell yourself. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If you are a good person to be around and you just do, and you don't want to over help neither because some people get, you know what I mean? Yeah. Too yeah. dependent. <laughs> so, um, would you work with Meg? Um, yeah. Are you, like, how do you feel about, like, the women in hip-hop? I love in the general? women. I love the women, the whole women in hip-hop. This is a great time for it's women. Amazing hip -hop, time, honestly. I feel like there's a lot of um, weird, just like you know, petty politics on the women's side that women are creating, and we're acting like men mm. and that are in fucking gangs and shit. Like you can't yeah. do stuff there's with a this and everything. And there's a couple in the underground and mainstream, even here. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you did a song with her. I don't want to do a song with you. Like what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Have you ran into that? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of politics, okay. especially because I'm like a friend. I'm the friendly girl. I actually have independent like relationships one on one with all like the females that's moving. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have a good relationship with them. We cool, mm -hmm. but all the politics come in because they don't like each other and they don't want each other to be with each other. And mm -hmm. you know, so there's always so many politics. And I feel like, especially in New York, like when you get out the when you get in other states and stuff. It's different. Like, you embrace each other. You went together. But here, sometimes it get a little hard because everybody kind of... It's like they're competing for one spot. Yeah. Like, just one spot. Like, it's like, why we can't all... Yeah, that's when you, you know said bitches Move. is like crabs in a bucket. You see a bad bitch it getting is. shine. You should love it. That's not what it's it gets. Fact. What, I said, what I said in D.C., I said, bad bitches get along. Broke bitches don't belong. You heard? I mean, and I really hate that because I, what I will say is, once again, from a consumer perspective, it seems like the ladies are collaborating. They, I mean, there are a couple, you know, that have their issues and they bring it to the socials. But I think overall, this is the most collaborative time that I've seen women in hip hop. 
It's because there's only so many women in hip hop now. Yeah. So it's like, but there could also be. There should be a lot more. I don't feel like it's enough, yeah. to be honest. There, I definitely don't feel like it's there enough. There could be more, but then there also could be a lot of women that are in hip hop and not working together. I feel like now, like people are really coming together. They're doing features. They collabing even if it's Who? more content. I mean, even just now, we had Sierra just did a, a song with yeah, Lola Brooke Lola and, and, Lee, and yeah, Lady London, and, and we just had the Bad Bitches collab with Callie and Lola. And, and who we had, else like, though? And like. What do you mean, like mainstream? Yeah. Um, Nicki Minaj just did a song with Ice Ice. Nicki Minaj did, freak, she, uh, not Freaky Girl, she did. That's um, her artist, though. That's some little Wayne did the records with their, their artist, too. What you mean? Like, she's her, she, she signed Ice Spice, too. So it's like, that's Nikki her artist. Nicki signed Ice Spice? Yeah. I knew she signed um, London Hill. I didn't she know she signed Ice, Ice Spice. Spice. That's why they did the record, too. Did That's T. I did not Bro, know that. Yes. I knew she signed. She signed Ice Spice. Wow. See, I just learned something. Because my whole thing with um, Nikki and Ice Spice doing a song together was, I was like, damn, Nikki signed London Hill, but they haven't made, well, London Hill got on the, um, I think it was the Freaky Girl mm -hmm. mix, but they didn't like do a song together and she didn't hop on any of London's songs. But I was like, damn, she hopped on Because she got to roll London out, I feel like. She got to make her the hit and then she hop on one with her, boom, mm. where they do it together. And I feel like Ice Spice, her is right I fresh. really didn't know so that she signed timing. her. That's the you feel me? That's interesting. It's perfect timing for it. And I feel like it's definitely like needed for the, the, the upper to support the new artist that's coming in. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of people that's here together and here together, they don't want to collab. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Like it's good for like us to connect with everybody. I feel like it just could be so much more and it's not. Mm -hmm. But like think about it. Guys doing songs with guys all the time. Mm -hmm. Why is it if three we could say three girls did a good song, that's good enough to say three girls did a good song together. Um I think it's baby steps. I feel like it's the same thing as like a president being in office and doing a shitty job and then having another president come in and be like, well, you could have did so much more, but they're not really working with. They only working with but so much. I feel like right now it's a time where like we can't expect too much because it has to happen. Like we gotta gradually. get to it. We don't. It don't we gotta, gotta be get gradual, to it. I think bro. we're this gonna get to it. This is a new it. day and age. All we gotta do is do it. We don't gotta usher nothing in. It's already being done, and ladies is killing it because we already gotta do so much more than men gotta do. They mm -hmm. just throw on a fitted and some and some tims, and they're done. Like we gotta come <laughs> correct when by the time you already get in there. So it's like like so I said, baddies get along because the girls that's working hard mm -hmm. and people that respect they respect each other. We respect each other. It's mm -hmm. Always the people who don't have as much that's criticizing the others about what they're doing instead of just focusing on it. So mm -hmm. I feel like everybody that's already in there moving should just be collabing their sounds. But instead, it's like, yo, we don't want to be compared to this person. Sometimes we don't want to share their fan base. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a lot of other politics mm -hmm. that's involved. And I feel like just as women, if we know that we win it, we should just be connecting more. Yeah. You feel me? Like it's, it's a win-win situation. What are we losing? I can agree with that. Um, but a collab that you did that I feel like did well was your collab with K Goddess. Mm -hmm. Um, for Big Dog. That was that was lit. Big dog. Um, how was working with her? Like she's a Brooklyn artist. Um, she's another one with a gritty sound. How did that collab Why are you happen? smiling like that? <laughs> How am I smiling? I'm like, she got a gritty sound. Don't, like, if y'all could see me, I think that I'm fine. I don't know how I'm smiling. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but how did that collab come about? And, um, like, how was it received? How was that collab received? Um, no, nah, I feel like it was received well um, by just the vibes of New York and me being a newer artist coming in. Mm -hmm. And K-Goddess already, like, have, having her movement and drill. And like you know, we we we, we connected because we were on tour together. So it was like before we did that record, I was already in Atlanta. We were doing a lot of the same shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense from a standpoint part of like I said, we all moving, we all winning, we right. winning together. It's a win win situation. You know? Okay, that's dope. I think that that y'all sound together. Big dog really shit. Good. Big. Big thoughts. Everything big, like you it's everything that big. That was a song, extra. and that was a song for the ladies. You get I me? Mean? Like that was that was in gear. We wasn't just talking about what guys are doing. That was just for the ladies. Big yeah. dog energy. Like that was the whole vibe of that. So, all right, now I'm very curious. If you had to put together like a dream team of five artists that you would want to put on a project, what five artists would you pick on the project, or like one record? No, on a pro they don't all have to be on the same record, oh, okay. but like 
just five features that you would like you think would be a like the dream team it could be anybody oh oh i would want to do a record with j cole on my album right i feel like an album intro or close off with cole mm. would be fire okay and then i feel like um i definitely gotta have something i'd have something with um i want i would i feel like i would want it to be so different like i would want to have like it wouldn't even be a dream team because it would be so many different vibes. But um, like, I would want to do some with Burner Boy mm. or like Wiz Kid. Okay, you know what I'm touching saying? into your African rules. Yeah, Love exactly. That. Okay, and cool. then I would bring it like I want to do something with like somebody in the South in like New Orleans from Cash Money, like something of that nature, or like a Big Frida. You know, like the bounce okay. music. Like, yeah, that would know. Incorporate those vibes. Mm-hmm. Then I feel like I got to go and get, like, the city girls got to get JT in Miami on the record uh-huh. one time for the okay, girls. Okay, so you making it around the... Yeah, around. I want to connect and get every, every like, from all the different energies. Because I feel like, as a collector, we listen to music from people that's all over and they're bringing their influence and their vibes mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so if you could not if you join in two things together from here and here and it's and it's lit it's gonna be lit you know what i'm saying i want to embrace everything that's winning and that also other people don't know so if i'm in new york and they not listening to bounce music and i put some fire bars on and we got a bounce hook mm-hmm. it's lit mm-hmm. drake was sampling mad bounce music in his he albums sure you know what i'm he saying sure and on the low like and at first it wasn't even res- no it, it was on the high people was like oh, what well, the heck well, like well, what is the this city girls track but one went on oh um nice for nice for what nice is for what did he have something on there too um oh no that was just the city girls yeah you talking about when, when he was like two bad, bad bitches that yeah bad. yeah two bad bitches but on um okay now great answer but you still owe me one more artist one more artist oh i gotta have drake right we can't live him all i would order the gold the link okay Drake Shout never Drake. did nobody wrong. I don't care what people say. He ain't never did a feature wrong. What, <laughs> what Drake feature what you know that he did that Drake wrong? Did. <laughs> <laughs> they be blaming him because he light skin. I just feel like people be having something to say. <laughs> um. So how would you say in terms of, we talked about the way that people receive you from like a fan perspective, from a consumer perspective. How are you received by other artists? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Period. We got to ask them. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, have people been welcoming to you? Do you feel like, because you talked about the politics, but you said that you get along with everybody. Do you feel like it's more of like, it doesn't really affect you? Like, how have your interactions been within the industry? It be good. When, when, when I go outside, we show each other love mm-hmm. sometimes, but I be seeing motherfuckers side eyeing me. Mm. I mean, I they guess. They be That comes with being a bad bitch, though, sometimes. Yeah, so it's like, I don't really know. All the... Real love be fake, fake love be real. Who knows these days? So mm-hmm. it's like I don't really think I feel like like I make a lot of connection because I'm genuine and I got good energy. So it's like you can't really be openly mean. You will be being like a dickhead. You mm. get what I'm saying? Like it's like <laughs> you're bugging, right? But um, on the real, I feel like definitely everything come back. Like some people talk shit, some people got stuff to say, mm-hmm. some people. It's a, it's a lot of things. That's always people are gonna always say something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But in overall, I feel like as long as I'm showing love, they're gonna give me good love back so i don't feel affected by it because mm-hmm. i'm not engaging in it like right. that's never been my mo to just go on live and talk about people and there, i've had a lot of situations with shit in the industry like anybody else but i'm not about to sub post you on my status yeah that's i was gonna say when you said that like that's dope because i never heard of like you publicly being in anything so i like that you keep it too much going on going on well i'm about to give you more shine to the situation i'm not trying to get caught off of your situation either you know what i'm saying because i've had a lot of situations with people that's bigger than me that i could have made it into something um to get caught off of Mm -hmm. but you know i feel like it's the bigger thing when y'all both know y'all got some and then like you still in the same spot with them and they can't do nothing about it yeah (laughs) because nobody knows and now they would just be like like a hater yeah so what about when it comes to like the men in the industry um i feel like women often talk about like there's a fine line between men who reach out to them for like real business inquiries like they really want to work and then the men that try to like utilize like the sexual favors the like even if it's not actually happening they try 
um, or even like with the flirting, just being very inappropriate to women. There's a very fine line yeah. between that for a lot of women in the industry, unfortunately. Yeah, it's definitely like be, you definitely sexualized as like a female in the industry. You feel me? And you gotta definitely weed out what's real and what's not. But I also feel like um, that's anywhere. When you go to the deli, it's niggas in your head. So mm-hmm. it's like it really it's a it's a fifty fifty. I feel like you know you just gotta. Um, you gotta you gotta filter through it. They they're like that, but it's also people that like they gonna put the work first if you actually working. Mm-hmm. Like there's some people that we think is really working and they not really doing as much work as they can mm-hmm. or as they should be doing, mm-hmm. and they outside doing other shit. So of course that's what's gonna be expected. You mm-hmm. feel me? Or like so. You said that like it happens every day, and I think it does. It definitely does happen every day. But like, there's a difference between like I go to the store, order a sandwich. I is trying to talk to me. He's flirting, like in order for me to get my sandwich, I could leave and go to another one. But a lot of like upcoming you don't artists, get a discount. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of upcoming artists, they may feel like you know, this is my shot. This is like my one chance, and they may feel like that's something that. They have to do now from somebody that you just said you've had experience with that. You didn't engage in that. What are some like words of advice that you I mean, can give? It gets crazy though, because like you said, like you sometimes they 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 make you feel like it's your shot. But that's what men will do. They mm-hmm. will make it seem like they're gonna give you that shot mm-hmm. if and but you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So like that's the tricky part. You gotta really like you gotta see if they're full of shit or not, and you gotta see if if it's worth it. Because sometimes like. Like, I, I be out with rappers all the time, and, like, girls, you think you about to smash him, and he want to call you back, but, like, he going to smash him and forget about you. Like, mm-hmm. that's that now, mm-hmm. so you might as well just have, like, you know, passed See, on that. Seize your opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> Get something put out a, of put it. A, put a, put a, 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 a job <laughs> resume in real quick. Put an application in. No, I like, definitely <laughs> feel that. I mean, especially if you're going to do it regardless. Get something out of it. But I think that more importantly, um, the bigger message in what you're saying is it's not necessary. You can continue on with your career without engaging in that. And really, it comes down to your discernment. Making sure it's that a harder you know way, though. Is. It's harder because I feel like I definitely like I just know I know so a lot of people I'm not um like a clout chaser and I don't want to I ha- I don't want to put that on the forefront so sometimes you got to work a little bit harder if you mm-hmm. don't want to take that way if I you don't want to be in the studio trying to do a song and like he's trying to feel your thigh then you gonna have to just go and do it yourself without right. that you know what I'm saying but right. that's that's just up to you on your personal chance I feel like I've been on mad years ago if I would have a few of them. DMs I'd have went over mm-hmm. on them late nights People but you know them up on them offers. but that's so sad because I feel like talent is talent talent shouldn't have to be measured or made public because you fucking a sucking or doing whatever like it should be because you're genuinely but talented. that's the issue it's not even about talented it really did just be like who you know and what they did to know but them. I feel like at the same time if you're not talented and you do a sexual favor that gets you you only gonna be big but for so long people not really gonna fuck with yourself keep having to do them favors I hate that for them Because it be like that Like there's a lot of people That's really in position Because of relationships That they have behind closed doors mm-hmm. And arrangements Like it's who you know It's your resources You yeah. know what I'm saying Your, your net worth is your, like Your resources and stuff So it's a 50-50 Fortunately I'm able to be around A lot of people That just know my bob Like they know like I like to talk to the boys Like boys because i'm already a pretty girl i don't want to be like trying to flirt and mm-hmm. like get i want to get stuff done so right. i'm fortunate to be around a lot of guys all the time that just know they understand that and it makes it easier but i've also been in rooms where it's like man if she's not on this time and she gotta go mm-hmm. and i just i eat that mm-hmm. <laughs> and i feel like what i hate and I asked you this question specifically because I feel like you are very comfortable with yourself. You'll post something like showing a little skin, showing a little cleavage, which is fine, which is what you should do. But I know that people take image and then try to create a narrative out of it. So I'm glad that you stay 10 toes down. You're doing what you need to do. I don't even post that much skin, to be honest. You don't really see me twerking. I, could, uh, I didn't say twerking. I feel like it's all above. You be posting like and bikini it's pictures. Wrong with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's that's regular. Wrong with that's it regular. At all, but you know, people take an inch and go a mile. They so do. and you're pretty. So I know that it's something that's you know it, happening behind like, closed mm-hmm. doors. I'm just happy to hear that it's not something that you've succumbed to. That's what I'm saying. Nah, I feel so, like I, we got to as ladies, we just got to stand on what we believe and like also just let people do what they like to do. Like don't judge people for what they do. Mm-hmm. Whatever works for you, work for you, and that's what type of person I am. Mm-hmm. Our friends 
companies that do everything. I got people that got all types of plug that do whatever to get whatever they got to do. I do whatever to get what I, I got to do. But mm-hmm. my route may not be the same as your route. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's all about understanding like what you capable of, what you willing to deal with and what you want. Yeah. Like, once you know those three things. Once again, do what you want to do. No shame. I do not shame anybody. But forgetting what they got to get. But it's just the fact that that has to even be an option just grinds my gears real bad. Um, so from the opposite standpoint, though, for people who are interested in you from more of like a romantic standpoint, um, how do people shoot their shots? Because you already got attention. I'm sure you got a lot of niggas in your DMs. Like what stands out to you for a nigga that actually wants to talk to you? <laughs> um, that's a good question. You know, I'm a hard one. Um, nah, it just be about like uh, understand. Right now, at my my bigger age that I'm getting at, mm-hmm. I'm more mature, right? Because I've been in the industry for a while, so it's tricky. Like when my answer a few years ago would have been way different, but now as a person that understand, like you do, gotta also be able to like make sure your significant other is happy. Yeah, and we in the I work in a job where it's like it's it's a lot going on. So right now I just like understanding God. Like really, he gotta just be patient and understanding first and we good. Like, so how but how can you tell okay, so are you more of like a shoot your shot in person or shoot your shot in DM? You gotta have to shoot it in person. That's in what person. I'm saying. Okay, because so I'm like, tell, how can like, you tell if somebody's Now I start a throwing guys, I just bring them out one time, put them right in the room and just see how they maneuver. Cause if we go home and he complain about anything that happened, anybody that said a hug, <laughs> yeah, a touch, or any like look complain. around, if you complain about anything, he's clipped. So it's like that's I'm, that's a test right uh-huh. there to see if he's with it or not. Cause y'all have been in times it's like I done dated guys for a mad while and then the moment that they come out, they like, Oh, so this is what goes around. So you just sitting in a room with thirty guys all the time and you don't talk to no guys. Mm -hmm. nobody got time for that you know what i'm saying so it's like i'm a person you gotta see me in person and i gotta see how you move in person like Mm -hmm. i just see how you move with me and with me also being me too because i have a strong personality and some guys they want to be the center of attention Mm -hmm. some guys also want to act like they the man and they can do all of this so Mm -hmm. it's like you gotta catch the one catch me and see let me see how you really is like okay so now if you had to build your perfect man what would that look like? Um, now, you could either say one person or you could say, like, the body of, let's say, like, a Michael B. Jordan, face of a insert person here. You could, like, <laughs> pick and choose, too. What is your, like, ideal man look like or your ideal type? I, you know, I ain't really got no type of how he look like that. That's crazy. You just got to be handsome. Like, like I like light skin, dark skin, mm-hmm. medium tall, kind of tall, not too short. Uh, but if he, if he, if he got, if he, if he slim built, I just don't like husky niggas. That's okay. Something. He cannot be that. But as long as he's like. You know, handsome, like yeah. cute in his own way. He bad. can have freckles and be ginger with a curly little fro. Or but he if he's fine, he's fine. He's fine, he's fine. I, I definitely got a tie. I feel the same way, though. Yeah. Like, even, every guy they did all look different. Eh? Like, <laughs> and, exactly. So that's why I was like, you could even build your. And I'm trying to think about, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I don't really have a time to really give you an example, but hopefully you get where I'm coming from. Okay, so if you find, you find. He's fine. And then the personality. He got to have money. He got to have that bag. Mm-hmm. He got to be smart you gotta have money you feel me i like an ambitious guy that know he want to do it himself in the future like he got plans like okay. ooh, damn daddy you got plans what we gonna do we gonna build our house weird <laughs> and what about our honeymoon so we gonna take the pj there oh the pj okay so i was about to say do you feel like so having money do you mean more money than you or just having money period yeah, he gotta have more money than me because maybe if he don't got like he don't gotta be filthy rich, he just yeah. gotta have more than me to do what he needs to do, like take mm-hmm. care of himself well and afford to be able to move mm-hmm. right. Like, cause this is growing. That's why I said I like an ambitious man because mm-hmm. he might just be well off right now, but he's smart that in the next five years he's gonna be up M's. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You gotta mm-hmm. get in there early. Um, <laughs> and the reason why I was asking was because. A lot of a lot of people say like they want somebody who makes more money than them so that they could get like so they could be taken care of and stuff like that. But we just heard about Gabrielle Union saying her and D Wade go fifty fifty on a bill. 
They that's are like, both rich. They yeah. are both rich. Yes. Um, but it's still that's what I'm saying. More money than you. You have whatever you have right now, but that doesn't mean that that's always what you're gonna have. You're gonna be rich one day too. Nah, that's a fact. Um, I spend a lot of money, but I'm also financially smart. Like I don't like to just like ridiculously spurge on dumb stuff. So it's like um, I want a man that he is maneuvering right. I've dated a lot of guys that got mad bag and like they just blowing it on dumb shit. And I really just look at you like you dumb because you could be starting businesses. You could you could be really flipping that into mm -hmm. more, and you dispersing on something like that. So I'm, it's definitely more about the bigger picture. But also, I don't want to be with nobody where they complaining. About about not being able to do stuff and not, you know what I'm saying? Right. You want to be with somebody that's comfortable, mm -hmm. like comfortable in their mind. So you rich, you have a, you marry a man that's rich. Y'all going 50 50 on the bills? No, he going to pay all the bills. Okay. He rich. <laughs> Why so do I need to pay we. the bills? Like, can I just buy nice shit? Like, I needed to hear what you were saying because I said, Gabrielle Union, Dwayne Reed, your first response was they rich. So they you, rich. you, when you, no, nah, because you know what I thought about is like, um, Nikki has said something when she was like, oh, they always ask me, like, um, yeah. why would you date a regular guy mm -hmm. if he are richer than him? And she was like, well, I'm richer than the rappers too. So yeah. what's the difference? No, like, that I definitely feel. And they have history. I feel like she didn't just meet him. I really. It's just, if you richer than the person you richer than them it don't even matter about the money mm -hmm. about what it is you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so it's like it's about the love who says it has to be this it's about the relationship and what y'all can do but it's a partnership yeah. so you don't want to be with no partner where you you doing you pulling all the weight you know what i'm saying listen i've definitely dated a couple broke niggas um you so. was pulling all the weight girl not Good with shot. not with the couple. Y'all was going out to eat. You had the front of the tab at dinner. We before. definitely went fifty fifty a couple times. Cause you wanted to go out. If you broke, I don't even um, want to go. I'm taking yeah, myself out. I felt like it was like you know. I know. Next I know time, your financial struggles. Just go out so to eat with your right. homegirls. There's no need for them to no. Come. Now I'm going out to eat by myself. By I love a good solo yeah, that's date. What I'm saying. So um. Let's also just talk about anything else you have going on because I know music is not the only thing. We talked about your modeling. I also saw actress in your your credits as well. Yes. So let me find out. You about to be on TV screens. You already have. Yeah, what's, what's I tea definitely with that? have. Um, I mean, I've been in the industry for a while, so I did a lot of um extra work in movies from like How to Be Single and stuff from Love and Hip Hop and a lot of stuff over the years. I just did a um J Cole video that's gonna be driving. I don't know if I was supposed to say that. It's gonna be. Driving soon you know okay. what i'm saying Cole's coming out so uh -huh. i did i did have a, a nice role in the video so i'm excited for that to come okay it gives me and um um yeah and then we got we got some i'm working on i want to do like more movies so like you're going to see me and more stuff on that and like okay. beyond the music what kind of movies um i'm excited like some black movies okay <laughs> all right i'm pro black so okay. it's like I like to support the up and coming what's them Tubi favorite, movies. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> not the Tubi movies. The Tubi movies. Nah, they funny to watch. I mean, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the Tubi movies. What's your favorite movie? Bro, do not embarrass me on this show right now. It's something so corny. Why? What's your favorite movie? I don't even want to. All right, say tell it. me like this. That is not corny. Okay. It is, ain't it? Once One you think thing about I will it. say, and if you know, you know. <laughs> um and I might ha I might even have the wrong movie, so that'll make it even worse. But when she got up on the stage at that audition, do I have the right <laughs> you movie? You got the right movie. Okay. <laughs> Young me watching that really thought she was fucking Yo, shit. I just seen uh, the meme now and they said how she got in with the She was like one, two, do, do, do. No, it did not give as an adult watching it back. I was like, oh my god, but that's not corny. I don't that's know a good, why I like that's, this. That's so a much. that's a nice one. If you know, you know. Once All right, we're going to sell it? All right, yeah, it's your movie to share. Yeah, just don't roast me, bro. It's Save the Last Dance. Save the Last Dance. Yeah, when she was up there auditioning, the audition really? did not give. That's to be I a said. favorite movie, though, like, to be a favorite, that's kind of crazy. Um, Honestly, at least you have one. I'm very indecisive. My favorite movies be alternating between um, Wolf on Wall Street and Columbiana. Oh yeah, and I like glitter too. Yo, you seen that movie with Mariah Carey? Yes, the those movie. are like those are nostalgic childhood movies. That's why they my favorite because oh, when wait. I watch them, I that's feel hustler. young again. That's hustler. I'm like, yeah, the stripper movie. That no, you talking about hustler? No, yeah, glitter. That's not that. my you talking about J Lo? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, Mariah oh, Carey. You ever seen sorry, glitter? Sorry, Mariah girl. Sorry. You, sorry. if you ain't see glitter, you gotta see. No, it. I haven't it's seen OG it. One. I know of it. I haven't seen it. It's OG um, movie. So I know we have to wrap up. So let's um, talk about before we finish. Vulgar, Vulgar Inc. Yes, your brand. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. Okay, so um, yeah, I started Vulgar right before I started doing music, and um, you know, it just transitioned into me doing a lot of like celebrity styling. So I've had an opportunity to style a few different people. Mariah Lynn for her music video, um, stole my bitch. All of the looks were from my brand, and a few other people for different magazine covers and stuff. And um, honestly, that is my first viral, viral, viral video by myself. Like my commercial to Vulgar did three point five million views Career. yeah and that was like uh, creatively that was my commercial that's the first thing that i did to launch it so mm -hmm. for it to come full circle and like support my music now mm -hmm. because that's what happened it's just like you know you have a lot of things that work very well, well together and like even like when it comes down to the music the acting the modeling your clothing like Everything is um, entertaining and is image based. So that's really, really dope. Thank you. What else can we look forward to? What you what you working on? What you got coming out? Like, what's really the tea with that? I'm going to put out some music. I'm going to have some singles coming really, really soon. Um, um, before summer? Yeah, definitely okay. before summer. Okay, all right, before yeah. summer. I mean, I've just been teasing so much music. Uh, stop, playing with, stop playing that one. And then... Um, uh, no stressing, which mm -hmm. is the one that you were talking about mm -hmm. that just dropped. So mm -hmm. we have stop playing, no stressing, and never stop, which is one that I did like the block work TV and everything. Mm -hmm. Where I'm just trying with the Detroit beats and you know involving more of that and my this little home connection. So you know that's coming. And okay. like I said, I'm just excited to get back into the fashion, and I'm gonna be surprising some people. I want to keep them on their toes. Oh, all right. Well, we will definitely be looking for it. Um, is there anything else that you want to talk about, touch on before we wrap up? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for stopping by. It was so good talking to you. For the people that don't know, shout out all your socials so that they know where to find you. What's up? It's your girl, Stunna Dior. And you already know the vibes. You can follow me on Instagram at The Real Stunna Dior. My music is out on all platforms, Stunna Dior. And if you don't know who I am, get into it. Do your Googles, do your research, right? Hitting in plain sight. And it's about to pop off and it's about to go up. Up, up and stop. Up. up like the roller coaster. Yeah, That's me. what you were saying before. Yeah. Thank y'all for tuning in. We'll see y'all next video.